I want to welcome you. There's a lot of people on the call. Uh, if this is your first time, we'll have a chance afterwards for you to say hello. Uh, and if you're watching us this week on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, uh, all of our broadcasts will be uh, put on these websites uh, uh, after we have the lesson. Uh, so this class we present every Thursday is a class I've been presenting for over 30 years. I've been working with the book, You Can Heal Your Life, since it was first published. It's got many different covers. Here is one. Uh, the one that you're more used to seeing probably is this one with the big heart. Uh, last I heard, there were 66 million copies of this book in circulation and in 28 languages. Uh, I believe over 100 million people have been reached and benefited by the teaching uh, of Louise Hay. It's become an absolute phenomena. There's a publishing house that uh, was started in her name and run during her lifetime. She passed away a few years back. Uh, and the Hay House became a place where all these new thought authors uh, found a place to publish their books. So her influence has been amazing in the world. And she had her very start right here in this particular center, uh, formerly called First Church of Religious Science New York. Now we call ourselves First Center Religious Science New York. Uh, we've had four senior ministers here, and I believe she was largely taught during the time of uh, Dr. Raymond Charles Barker and Stuart Grayson. Uh, so when I'm reading her material, you can heal your life. I'm always realizing that I'm reading passages from what we call the science of mind. That's a textbook, which I can show you. And it also has several different covers, but it's authored by Ernest Holmes. Uh, whatever Louise was teaching came about from her study here in this, in our particular church center. And the passages that she used largely came from the Science of Mind textbook. Louise, though, was unique in all the world. She had a unique gift in that she was able to simplify or distill information, uh, like information that was found in the textbook. And she was able to explain it in such a way that most people could comprehend it and take it in. For those of us who've been around for a long time, like myself and a few people on the call, uh, who have been studies of uh, students of the science of mind, uh, we've read a lot of books. And some of the books would have been by people like uh, Judge Troward, and many of us studied Ralph Waldo Emerson, Frederick Bales, Emma Curtis Hopkins, and many others. And even we might have studied some Christian science with Mary Baker Eddy. We probably would have studied something from the Fillmores. So some of us have been involved in this odyssey of study. And most of these folks that I'm talking about right now were part of what Ernest Holmes understood. And all of this was the source for the great information that was distilled through and presented by Louise Hay herself. Uh, so I just want you to know there's a lineage here of where Louise got her information and she received her classes with us. Uh, she might have emerged in the 1980s uh, as a former student of First Church or First Center right here, our, our center. And the thing is, she was able to take this information and simplify it, make it usable, accessible, understandable for everyone. And that's the challenge that we have right here at the center now. Uh, when we talk, we have our organizational meetings. We really try to figure out how can we teach this teaching now to maybe people in their 20s and 30s and using language that they can understand because we're, we're teaching a principle of life. We're teaching people how to use this principle so that they can have a, a much more empowered uh, uh, living. Uh, you know, you can master your life, you can master the possibilities, you can improve your life. Uh, the teaching offers you, uh, it offers you all the instruction you could ever need to do, to have improvement in so many areas of your life. 
Louise happened to have been on Oprah Winfrey several times over the years. And whenever she appeared on that show, her book was on the New York's New York Times bestseller list before. And, and then when she you know, went on to the Oprah show, it, it went to the top of the, the list, the New York Times bestseller list a couple of times. She was able with that book to do something that was never done before in our whole movement. The book, You Can Heal Your Life, has gone forth to do great work beyond anything that our organization ever um, would have known that it could do because it reached an audience that no one's ever been able to tap into since. So again, she founded the Hay House Publishing Company. I recommend anybody, you know, look it up because they have lots of wonderful things to read. And through her leadership, uh, she was able to publish dozens and dozens and dozens of authors and millions of people have been helped uh, by her writings and also the people through the Hay House. So this evening, I wanna go to present some of the main points, key ideas, because I'm reading each week that we're having so many people tune in into our read broadcast on Instagram and YouTube and uh, Facebook. I know there's a lot of new people. We have over 5,000 people who have signed up now. We're very busy trying to connect with everybody, send you invitations. If you're not on our, our mailing list now, simply send us your contact information and that way we can include you. Uh, you might be watching this particular broadcast through the week. So send us in an invitation. Uh, if anybody wants to support the center or be a member or uh, support, we always have buttons there where you can donate $5 or $50 or whatever you want. Um, there's very little, everything we do here for the most part is uh, based on a love offering basis. So we're, we, we love to have your support, but also please invite your friends uh, and tell them it's free because it is. If you inspired to donate and uh, support us, that's great also. Um, we have a wonderful introduction to the teaching on Tuesday nights. Uh, so please send us a message. Um, oh, so the Tuesday nights, we're having a class. We had the first one last night. It's really a, uh, an introduction to, to the science of mind. Uh, it's going to go for five more weeks. So if you're interested in that, send Jimmy a message and we will, we will invite you into it. Uh, most everything we do here, as I mentioned, is of no cost. And you're always welcome to make a donation if you want. The Tuesday night was an exception. That's a class that we offered, I think, for 50 or $60. And we offered it with a scholarship. So anybody can join at any price point. You could say, I want to donate $10. And you'd be welcome or you would be welcome for free if you couldn't afford to, if could not afford to make a donation. So uh, Tuesday, join us. You've missed one class, but each class will be self-sustaining. I mean, it'll be... It'll be a good class in and of itself. So we've got a minute or two meditation that some of you are very fond of, which I'm happy to share with you. And then we have tonight's wonderful lesson. So it starts out, some of you are very familiar with this. <coughs> Deep at the center of my being, there is an infinite well of love. I now center myself and I allow this love to flow to the surface where it fills my heart, my body, and my mind, fills my consciousness and my very being. And I sense it and I feel it, and I allow it to radiate, radiate out from me in all directions. And I know it returns to me and it multiplies. The more of this love I have, the more I give, the more I use, the more, I'm, the more I realize I have more to give and use. The supply is endless. The use of this energy makes me feel good. As I use it, I know it's an expression of my inner joy. I love myself, therefore I'm learning to take better care of myself. I'm lovingly feeding my body better foods. I'm taking better care of myself. I'm noticing um, I'm drinking better beverages, better food, less junk. Um, I lovingly nourish my body, I loving, and it lovingly responds to me with health and vibrant energy. I love myself, therefore I provide for myself a comfortable apartment or home dwelling where it's a pleasure for me to live in and fill the space with the vibration of love. So anyone coming into my space, my room, 
uh, myself included, can feel nurtured by this love. I love myself, therefore I work at a job where I give or I volunteer. I work doing something that I really enjoy. And I do so in some type of occupation or hobby that uses my creative talents and abilities and allows me to work uh, with and for people that I care about. I love myself and I earn the money that I need through my job or in other ways. I know always that I'm supplied and supported. I love myself, therefore I behave and think in a loving way. So that's my practice. I behave and I think in a loving way to all people wherever I find them, because I know that whatever I give out comes back to me and multiplies. I only attract loving people in my world for they are a mirror of what I am. I love myself, therefore I forgive myself, I forgive others and I release the past and I release grievances and judgments I release it all so I can be free. I am free. Therefore, I totally commit to living my life in the now and releasing the past. I'm committed to living my life this day and being about what's happening this day. And as I do, I'm going to experience each moment as good. I'm going to know that my future is bright, joyous, and really secure because I'm living in the now and I'm not living in yesterday. I release the past and I forgive everyone and I am secure. I'm one with the universe and I know that I'm a beloved child of the universe and the universe is lovingly taking care of me now and will forevermore. So that ends the meditation. And so it is. That's a very powerful meditation. I'm very fond of it. You can listen to it on, uh, through iTunes and through Google Play. Uh, look for any of Louise Hayes audios. I've been using versions of this meditation for years. And I've been taking that message into spiritual organizations that I have led and also support groups that I have facilitated in hospitals, treatment centers, and schools. I've seen Louise Hay and I've listened to her, I've met her and the material that she uses touches, helps people in all kinds of ways. Uh, it can help just about any kind of human condition. The groups that I was working with in the 1990s um, were comprised of several different types of people. One was mothers and children. The children had AIDS. I, you know, I was there as the mothers were taking care of their babies who had AIDS. I took care, I facilitated groups with adults who had AIDS, people who were dealing with terminal illnesses of all kinds. And it was a time where there was no medicine from any of these illnesses or no good medicine. Louise Hay to them was a godsend. She was always utilizing the teachings of the people I mentioned before from the science of mind, all those great, um, great authors. Louise Hay knew about the power that we all possess. Her simple lessons were all about learning to love ourselves and to discover the power that we always have had within us. And for those of you who have not made a connection yet, I've already told you, 90% of her material came from these authors like Ernest Holmes. Uh, and the, the Ernest Holmes, uh, Emma Curtis Hopkins, Judge Troward, and many, many others, Mary Baker Eddy. I've noticed great leaders from every age build upon the ideas that have come before them. Louise, with her easy and charismatic style, was unique in that she touched, we think, over 100 million people worldwide. So let's get into some of the basics. Some of you, of course, I, I know will say, well, I've heard this all before. And then I'm going to say, well, it's good for you to re <laughs> be reminded of these things. It's always good to join in wherever you can on any, uh, any Thursday, make it a priority. Uh, I've said it probably too many times in the past couple of months, it's like taking out an insurance policy because the more you can stay plugged in, the more you're going to remember. Uh, and then the thing is, once you know that you're supplied and supporting, you're one with this source, begin practicing it hour by hour. I don't know all of your personal challenge, personal challenges. I know we have personal challenges. It's part of the human condition. Dr. Bill Tolliver, one of my teachers, was fond of saying, life is like a schoolhouse, and every day you're going to be presented with lessons, and you're going to get some version of them over and over again until you really learn the lesson. 
And then you will move on to other lessons because you're stepping up. You really get to a place where you don't need to learn the same lesson again. You operate from a higher position. Um, Arlene, there's a woman, Arlene, a, a minister who used to say, you know, when you're experiencing the same thing over and over again, she said, it's like uh, same song, different verse, a little bit louder, a little bit worse. You know, once you eventually, eventually learn a lesson <laughs> once and for all, then it, it will stop presenting itself. But until it happens because of the law of cause and effect, we have a tendency to keep bringing in the same old lesson over and over. We find ourselves in the same kind of jobs. We go from relationship to relationship. And we're winding up partnering with people who have similar problems. And then we start to think there's something wrong with us because we seem to encounter, encounter the same types of people. It's not that there's something wrong about us, but you know, most of the world's not geared to think that the problem or the challenge is, has anything to do with us. We are always thinking in terms of it's the job or the boyfriend, the girlfriend, or my parents, and all kinds of people outside of us. You've heard me mention this subject, I'm sure many times before in other classes. We have a tendency to become what's called other referred. By that, I mean, we have a tendency to go towards pointing a finger, blaming somebody. You might think all women are something, all my girlfriends have been something, you know, you have these, you make generalizations, but the, you know, rare is the person who looks within, right? Uh, you'll go towards my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my husband, my kids, the government or the <laughs> pastor present. We will rail against everything. We'll rail against the economy, the rising prices, and we get ourselves focused on everything outside of us. And that's the way most people do it, truthfully. So when you enter into a place like this, this is a different realm. This is a realm of consciousness. This is a realm of ideas. It's an entirely different approach. We acknowledge here facts and experiences that of different, all kinds of facts and experiences. We acknowledge them, but we don't let them be the determining factor. Examples are many. You might listen to your doctor's advice and diagnosis, all right? You might accept it totally because the doctor for many is the the authority and you put all your belief in whatever the doctor has said it doesn't occur to you that there are other doctors who will render other opinions and it doesn't occur to you that you have your own opinion that can be equally valid so what we teach you here is you have dominion over your own life and you have other choices and I've seen this play out over and over again in my lifetime. I've been involved in a lot of caretaking uh, occupations. It doesn't occur to you that you have personal power, that you have the ability to make decisions, that you are the author of your own experience. Not for most people. And I'm not speaking against, I'm not, I know some of you who are involved in this teaching, you know, know exactly what I'm talking about. And we're not speaking against any medical doctor because we believe in medical doctors. I myself have had some wonderful doctors that have been extremely helpful. But I've always known that to get other opinions is a good idea. And ultimately, the person who decides is you. You might have a medical thing and you get your blood work from Quest Diagnostics or the other one. And, and it'll tell you a story about your blood work, just like a doctor with his or her diagnosis. They give you objective facts. The question is, what are you gonna do with these objective facts? What are you going to decide? In this class, we will suggest that you have unlimited power that you can tap into, and you can learn how to tap into it. You can learn how to heal your life or definitely improve it. We all acknowledge that we make a transition from this life to another at some point. But we have dominion over so much of our life and our life experience. And we give, and we have, we seem to give our power away really easy. It might be from the first phone call you get this morning, the first text message you might react to. You're in a good place and all of a sudden you're off to the races. So we can learn to harness this power in a different kind of way. Our world is a reflection of all our inner beliefs, the ones that we've built up for many, many years. In this class I'm teaching on Tuesday nights, last night, 
uh, we spoke of surface mind. That's where all the day-to-day -day, um, uh, chatter takes place. You might think of yourself on an ocean. That's where the waves are. There's a lot of bumpiness on the top of the surface. You're on the top of that ocean being buffeted around all the time. But deep in the center of your being, like we read tonight, there is a stillness. And this is where life responds to you. You know, life takes the totality of what you're thinking and what you have believed, and it responds to you. So it's really important we start to get a handle on the discussions that we are having all day long and all week long. It's important we cancel out the negative thinking, the negatives in our daily conversation, Last week I joked, you know, you've heard, you've seen the three monkeys, hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. You can actively start canceling out uh, those conversations where people are talking about what's wrong. You don't have to be part of it. When people are talking about other people and, and all that negativity, you don't have to be a part of it. You can say, I, I, you can just simply say, listen, I'm not interested. You can step away. But the thing is, Whatever you entertain in consciousness, you're a part of, has a tendency to play out in your life very quickly. So we want to stop criticizing ourselves. We want to stop trying to straighten out other people. There's a medical saying that's probably beyond this particular class. I don't usually talk about it in an entry class, but it's, a, it's not a medical as much as a, a metaphysical saying uh, that I use in other classes. It's, it is this, in truth, there's nothing outside of you. So you can meditate on that idea. We can talk about it and make a whole class about that. In truth, there's nothing outside of you. So what that's saying essentially is what you're dwelling about on 24 hours a day and what you're fearing and what you're obsessing over will have a tendency to show up in your life. So if you're a constant worrier, please do yourself a favor and just start working on that, you know, to say, I release the need to worry. I release it and replace whatever it is that you're all consumed with, with something very positive, which will probably be the exact opposite of what you're worrying about. I'm gonna refer you tonight to a poem by Ella Wheeler Wilcox, which I'm not going to read to you tonight. It's entitled, God and I in Space Alone. You can look that up yourself by Ella Wheeler Wilcox, God and I in Space Alone. Read that poem. It will guide you back to the realization that you alone are creating your own life. And perhaps I'll talk about that poem in another day in another lesson because it's, it's, it stands alone is really something that can be very, very helpful. And as we move into this lesson, here's the thing that we, we teach in all the classes. Our life can be full of challenges, and it is full of challenges for most people. And on some level, we hate to admit it, we bring the challenges in, we create them on some level, and that does not suggest ever that we are to blame for them. Uh, we don't like even thinking that we have anything to do with the challenges that are in our life sometimes. So this isn't a blame game. It's just taking a look the idea that, you know, we have things in our consciousness that magnetically draw things to us. If your whole consciousness is about worry, then it's obvious that you're going to bring forth things that are going to be troublesome. If your consciousness is about happiness and joy and peace, then your world is going to shape up to reflect that. Um, I'll ask a couple of questions. Have you ever been in a rough relationship? I think everybody on this call would probably, or probably, Three quarters would say, yeah, I've had some rough spots in my relationships. Have you ever been in a relationship that just doesn't work and seems to be diminishing? And there's probably just as many hands that will go up. Yeah, I've been in one of them. And I'm absolutely certain that no one has ever planned to be in a bad relationship or planned to be in uh, a spot where you have felt diminished and um you know, we don't walk into relationships wanting that to happen. Nobody does things like that intentionally. But beneath the surface, you know, the surface, the, the conscious mind that we're talking about, beneath that, um, you'll discover that there is these beliefs and these ideas that sabotage our success. There are patterns within us that draw the circumstances to us. And it's not personal, and there's nobody ever to blame. 
So we want to really be determined to get out of the blame game because it's a huge step forward if we release that. <clears throat> if you release the need to blame, it's a huge step forward forward for you metaphysically. You've, you've traveled a huge distance if you can do that. If you can release the need to blame or resent anyone, you'll step forward towards freedom in such a large way. When Louise Hay stated that we're each 100% responsible for all the things that happened to us, again, she was never talking about blame. That misstatement but gets misinterpreted by people all the time. Because when she says it, there's no shred of blame. It's a statement that talks about the law of cause and effect. What she's saying is, and what she's introducing uh, is the textbook, the law of mind. What Louise was getting at when she said we're each 100% responsible, she's speaking to the fact that we live in this creative energy that responds to you. And that's amazing to know that this creative energy responds to you. So once you realize that it's responding to you, it makes great sense to utilize it in a different way. This creative energy responds to what you think and what you feel. And so you live in it, you move in it, and you have your being in it and it responds to you. The movie, uh, The Secret, that was introduced, I believe, in 2008 or thereabouts, re depicted a huge genie in the sky. And he only had one phrase, I think, in the entire movie, which was, your wish is my command. So you can think of the universe, especially that deeper part of you that um, you think of the surface water, the deeper part of you. The universe is responding to what you deeply believe. It's always mirroring back, reflecting back to us, our thoughts, our thinking, and our feelings. Louise A. knew this. She taught this. She was a practitioner here at the center, um, right here, First Church of Religious Science. She knew what Ernest Holmes taught, and he taught that there was a power there is power available to each and every one of us. And he said, you can use it. So Louise was introducing a whole, to a whole generation, to a whole huge, huge audience, uh, to a people that you have power and you're not stuck. Uh, you might feel like you're stuck. You might feel you're in a terrible situation. You might feel like nobody understands you and life is terrible, but she was attempting to get people's attention and telling you that you have power and you can really change your life. You can heal your life. No one here at this center is ever going to deny any of us might be going through something very tough this moment. My goodness, I've listened to people this week who've going through really some hellish moments. But the, the truth behind everything is they still have power available to them if they choose to use it. So it could be anything. You could be having powers with you, problems with your job. You could have problems, you know, uh, with your relationships. You could be having health issues. Uh, recently, I know two dear friends who've been dealing with some, you know, really challenging things, you know, medically. And the whole country, you might even add, could be going through a lot right now as you turn on the news and you hear everything that you see from violence to economic problems. We're not ignorant of any of this, right? Any of the facts. You know, further, if you think of the world considering the hundreds of millions of more people uh, that are alive at this moment right now, there are problems and challenges that are way too many to count. So we acknowledge that all of us are dealing with circumstances and we all and we have empathy for everyone. We understand here that everyone's a spiritual being and you know, we're all evolving. And we acknowledge that we're all spiritual beings and we have very little say about what people are doing wrong because we have always enough work to do within ourselves. So we want to lift ourselves out of the area of problems and move into a spiritual arena where we're not ignorant about the facts, right? We're not ignorant, you know, we're informed people. Uh, we're not ignorant of the personal challenges, but we want to move to a different realm we want to tap into that power that we have within us, within us, you could call it the realm of spirit or the realm of causation, because it really all begins with you. Louise Hay claimed um, that she had worked, spoken to millions of people, had worked with thousands. And she says, you know, I've listened to people all my life. 
And she said, when you really listen, it's kind of humbling in a way because people are really suffering in a lot, a lot of instances. And oftentimes they're looking for somebody to fix them, save them, help them. And what Louise Hay knew and what we know in this teaching is this healing that they're looking for is definitely possible. First of all, the conditions that are in your life, whatever they are, uh, you, can, you can improve. The, the conditions themselves um, don't have consciousness. So that's a funny kind of word. I'll try to explain it. The conditions with your personal life, your financial life, your health, all of that, none of that has any consciousness in and of itself. The determining factor here is you. You have consciousness. If you've had a bad day all day long today, you could, if you really wanted to, turn it all over here, eight o'clock at night, whatever it is. You, everybody on this call and the extended call throughout the week, you have consciousness and you have power available to you. You can, you can turn things around if you really want to. So I'm gonna hope that you can understand this a little bit tonight because of this class. Our consciousness is the thing that is reflected in our life, nothing more. The sum total of our knowing, you know, our self-esteem, how we have learning to love, accept, and approve of ourselves, all of that's reflected. The sum total of everything I know and I'm aware of consciously and subconsciously is reflected in our life. So this isn't a goodness. It's not a badness. It's more the idea, this is the way the law works. So you've heard younger generations, um, they've all watched the movie of the law of attraction or another generation, you know, would have known of the law of mind or the cause of cause and expect law of cause and effect law of correspondence. Um, I don't care what any term anybody uses. I, I know the, the youth will talk about energy. There's a vibe, there's an energy and a force. They're talking about the same thing that everybody else has always talked about. And when you tap into it and you believe in it, things start to change. Whatever is going on inside of any of us in terms of our beliefs, in terms of our thoughts, they seem to go round and round and round inside of us. <laughs> and if we obsess over them, especially if they're negative and we get worried about what's going on, it winds up having an energy to it. And then uh, it becomes reflected in our life. So it was Ernest Holmes who suggested many of us are living our lives backwards, you know, from a metaphysical standpoint. The real power you have is inside you. So if you can center yourself and understand that you are one with power, uh, you're one with uh, this activity, uh, that the universe is really attempting to lift you, prosper you, bring you to a higher place. The only thing that's ever derailing us is our own sense, oh, I can't do this. It's too late for me. I'm not smart enough. I'm not this, I'm not that. So those are the conversations that you would want to work on and cancel and replace. You've heard me say endlessly in classes, we're in the business of changing in the lesser ideas for the greater. So wherever you find yourself criticizing yourself, that's a point of beginning. That's a place to stop. When you enter a teaching like this, you get more deeply involved in new thought, metaphysics, with the Louise Hay work, you're gonna to come to understand that the things that most people are talking about, you know, it's all about the externals for most people. What's in their bank account? What's gonna be for dinner tonight? Where the money's gonna come from and all that. Uh, that's what most of the world is doing. They're living in reaction to what's going on. Uh, those are like surface conversations, if you think of the ocean again. You'll come to know in this teaching that, you know, the approach is backwards because what we do here is we tap into the inner conversation, the deeper conversation. And as we start to understand that we are loved and we are supported and we have, we exist as pure potential, uh, that each of us are individuals, individualizations of this spiritual energy. Um, as you start to know that you're going to start to see rapid changes in your life. Um, the world at large is, somewhat numb and they're involved in mass thinking and uh, externalized thinking and they're not taking it to a deeper level where everything changes. Uh, it seems like everybody is reacting to everybody all the time. Okay, as you enter in a teaching like this, you realize it's a spiritual journey. 
Uh, it's been described as a journey without a distance because this journey is always internal. The journey is one where you are taking the pointing fingers that used to go outward towards everything and just pull them in. You're no longer going to want to be blaming the husband, the girlfriend, the boyfriend, the parents, the supervisor, the economy, the presidents, the politics, whatever. We have all these opinions, you know, where we blame and we want to forget that and pull that finger in. And when you get involved in this teaching, you'll observe and notice um, people are wherever they are and wherever they are, you know, it's like the American Indians don't judge anyone unless you've walked a mile in their moccasins. So you begin to notice people are doing whatever they're doing. And what does that have to do with me? And you're going to just put the focus back on yourself and what you're creating. Uh, you're going to realize you are where you are. And if you want your life to change, if you want to heal your life, then you're going to understand the responsibility for this is going to be an internal one, and it's yours. Um, we ask on Thursdays, uh, every Thursday, and it's not an intention to get in anyone's personal business, but the question always every Thursday is, what has it been like being you? Because if you think about it, um, if your li life is all about complaints and what's wrong, you're going to keep on creating that. Um, I can change that conversation around. I can interrupt that conversation. If I become more aware, if I meditate a little bit, if I do my affirmations or affirmative prayers, I can stop that stuff wherever I find myself going towards what's wrong or talking about another person. And I could understand this person is a child of God. They're doing the best they can. If I find myself criticizing myself, I can stop myself and just say, hey, Greg, cut it out. <laughs> Um, I love, accept, and approve of myself, you know, and that, those are the kind of messages that you would want to give yourself. As you utilize this book, you can heal your life and all the exercises that we talk about from week to week, uh, and you have an opportunity to reflect, you'll begin to see great cha changes. You'll see changes in your conversation, your dialogue, um, and things are going to start to improve. I've been using this teaching for many, many years. And one of my greatest teachers um, uh, said to me, you're writing your own script hour by hour, day by day. And he said, the final chapter has not been written yet. So it doesn't matter what it's been like for the past 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 60 years. It, you can start again, starting here, starting now. Raymond Charles Barker, our first uh, minister, said yesterday ended last night. So please do not carry all of that garbage into today. Release the need to bring it in. Uh, starting here, starting now, you can be in a new moment. So let's drop talking about what people have done to us and what's unfair. If you have a lot of fairness issues, start to look at your fairness issues and start bringing it back to yourself and realize I can create peace. I can create opportunity. I am supplied. I am supported. I am an inlet and outlet of God activity. Uh, the universe and I are a majority. See, when you invite this awareness into your life, uh, you can begin to direct it. Ernest Holmes said there's power for good in the universe and you can use it. So we're trying to give you tools and methods and ways uh, so you can learn how to tap into that power and stop giving it away everywhere. Uh, none of us want to language ourselves as being a victim in any way. <laughs> so we want to release the need to even think of ourselves as a victim. I'm not a victim of the world I see. Um, so we want you to consider, you know, giving up any notion of being a victim. Uh, we want to have you start to see yourself as being victorious in every way. I'm sure you want that for yourselves. We want you to have dominion over your own life. We really recognize here um, that we are responsible for our experiences, not to blame, but responsible. And as we know that, we'll, we were going to learn how to think differently. Ernest Holmes, who again wrote the textbook, who was Louise's ultimate teacher, would say, there's a power, an infinite power available to you and you can use it. And he would make the assertion that you know you exist as pure potential. You have all the power of the world at your disposal. But we have a tendency to get sidetracked in our training. 
Um, you know from the book, The Four Agreements, that we have all this baggage that comes from our early years that we've listened to and we've agreed to. So we want to have the willingness to release anything that's not supporting us so we can really live in the now. We don't want to keep dragging in the yesterday into the present. Because if we're living in the now, you're dropping resentments right and left. <laughs> you're dropping judgments. You're dropping the word should. And then you're going to be able to have new moments with everybody all the time. So that's the kind of change we want to see. And it will allow you to wake up each day with positive expectancy and greet people in a new day in a new way. And as you know, um, where you have forgiven them, uh, you know that they've done the best they could, even if some of it was horrendous, this is where they were, and you learn to forgive yourself, you'll no longer be carrying a lot of spiritual baggage with you. Dr. Holmes would say, people carry a lot of dead wood or ancient corpses, and let's drop them. And what he was talking about was resentments and a ton of stuff, uh, preconceived ideas, opinions we have about other people that we have all wrong usually, and we are free as we learn to forgive others. Um, as we come into this teaching, we approach the information Louise Hay teaches, and the challenge always is to be in a new moment where you're filled with the awareness of presence and know that there is perfection. And in the beginning, and I've taught many lessons with that just one page, where it points out her philosophy, knowing that each of these points are the classes we teach her, teach here. Um, the first I've already covered is that we're each responsible for all of our experiences. The next is something that I've added or alluded to tonight, which is every thought we think is creating our future. We're not victims of anything. We are responsible for our own lives. We get to be in new moments, thinking new thoughts. Uh, we're creating our new, uh, creating our, our life with our new thoughts. So um, we don't want to be like Chicken Little, who's doing the sky is falling, the sky is falling. We want to be resolute in our determination to stop talking about what's wrong and what's missing. We want to turn our conver conversation around towards uh, I am supplied and supported in each and every way in all ways. Uh, I'm going to stop complaining about prices. I'm going to stop complaining about the poor service. I'm going to stop complaining about everything. I'm going to start talking about the good in every instance I can. If you make this big decision that you're going to stop complaining, things will start to change dramatically. So you're maestro, you're playing the music, and you are the author of your own book, your own experience, and you have the ability to heal your life, change your life, starting here, starting now. I have much more, but this is a good place for me to stop. I will end with the suggestion from Ram Das, which is do your best to be here now. Meaning drop what was plain yesterday, drop the resentments, drop everything and practice being present, meditate a little, use your affirmations, work on loving, accepting, approving of yourself right now, the way you are and forgive everybody as you forgive yourself.